Hi, my name is Alex Cassano and I'm the events coordinator here at the Clearwater Historical Society. Today I want to present to you Cracker Country with Cindy Gordon. So please give a hand out and enjoy this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, yeah, I'm Cindy Horton. I'm the museum director for the Florida State Fair Authority, and uh, that includes Cracker Country, which is a living history museum that represents the late 19th, early 20th centuries in rural Florida. And we are located on uh, four acres at the Florida State Fair. And Cracker Country actually started in the mid-1970s when the fairgrounds moved to a new 325 acre location where we are today. Um, but the roots of Cracker Country go all the way back to the beginnings of the State Fair, um, which is a very, very long tradition here in the Tampa Bay area. Um, the original State Fair was known as the South Florida Fair and it took place in downtown Tampa um, at the Henry Plant Hotel. Um, which is now part of the University of Flor excuse me, University of Tampa. Um, the picture on the left there you can see is uh, the racetrack around Plant Field. That's the university's athletic track today. Um, but it was the original site of what turned into the Florida State Fair. Um, and that was all part of Henry Plant's uh, grand plan for giving people something to do in Tampa. When you build a, a railroad to nowhere, you better have something really cool at the end of it for the tourists who want to come down there for and the Tampa Bay Hotel fulfilled all that. And then later, um, big events like the Florida State Fair started taking place there. Um, so Cracker Country um, was actually begun by these two people. That's uh, Doyle Carlton Jr. and his wife, Mildred Woodbury Carlton. And the Carltons and the Woodberries both have very deep roots uh, in Pioneer, Florida, um, and also very deep roots in the Florida State Fair. Mildred's family was the, the Woodberries, um, and they came here in the 1820s, and the Carltons have been in Florida since the 1840s. Um, uh, uh, Hoyt Woodberry was Mildred's dad. He was the chairman of the Habitampa Cigar Company, and uh, also served as the chairman of the board of the South Florida Fair and Gasparilla Association for a long time. The gentleman on the right is Governor Doyle Carlton, who was Florida's governor during the Great Depression, and he uh, is the father of Doyle Jr., who founded Cracker Country, um, and both of them had a very long a very long history with the fair. On the left there you see one of uh, Habitampa Cigar Company's fabulous um, fair and Gasparilla floats. That one was from 1935. And then on the right there, uh, I think third from the left in the, in the little box in the front of the fair grandstand, you'll see Governor Carlton. He also served as chairman of the board of the fair uh, for quite a while also. So, um, in the 19, so the, the state fire stayed downtown at, uh, at the Plant City, or excuse me, Plant Hotel, uh, University of Tampa location until the mid 1970s when the fair just really outgrew that space. And at that time, it uh, moved to a 325 acre parcel of land out in Eastern Hillsborough County, which is where we still are today. And at that time, Doyle Carlton Jr. was the chairman of the board of the Fair Authority. And he and Mildred were walking one day uh, around that 300 acres, and they came upon this wonderful little four-acre hammock that had beautiful old oak trees on it. It was just a gorgeous piece of land, and they were lamenting that that might end up being turned into a parking lot. Uh, if they couldn't think of something better to do for it, with it, and uh, the legend is that Mildred said to Doyle, wouldn't your granddaddy's house look beautiful sitting right between those trees? And that's the Carlton house. It was the original house that was brought uh, for the beginning of Cracker Country. That and a couple of other buildings were there by the time of the state fair in uh, 1979 was the first fair that we had there. That house was built uh, in 1885 by Albert and Martha Carlton, who were the parents of Governor Carlton. He was born there in 1885, and that's the house on its original foundation. 
Um, the Carltons were pioneering, a pioneering citrus growing family and also um, cattle ranching, which they still are um, a huge Florida cattle ranching family today. Uh, the little boy on the bicycle is Governor Carlton. So this picture was taken about 1895. So, um, from that first house that was moved there, um, the Carltons eventually brought in lots of other buildings that became the museum as we know it today. They uh, did all the research, they located all the buildings, they either purchased them or had them donated. They uh, moved all of the buildings to the site and furnished them all and then donated the whole thing back to the state. So um, it truly was a labor of love for them and their family is still actively involved today. Um, Doyle Carlton III was our chairman of the board of Fair Authority for many years, and he's still actively on the board um, and also very active um, with Cracker Country still today, and their family foundations provide us a lot of support. So we are very, very grateful for our founding family. It was originally only supposed to be open during the Florida State Fair. And as I was telling them earlier, um, the the uh, state fair, a couple hundred thousand people come through Cracker Country in that 12-day period. So uh, we have a huge attendance. Uh, it just all happens at once. Um, and as the years went by, we expanded. We started doing school programs. And we now do um, elementary school programs for about 25,000 uh, children a year, mostly second grade and fourth grade. And our programs align with state standards for education. Many of the buildings in Cracker Country came from the area of the state, kind of south central Florida, Hardy, Highlands, DeSoto County, um, and all the buildings are around um, that area where you see the green line there. That is the commemorative Florida Cracker Trail. That is a uh, cattle drive trail that went 120 miles across the state, um, and that's still pretty prime cattle area today. This building is called Governor's Inn. It was originally a post office and a general store from Lilly, Florida. And it's dedicated to Governor Doyle Carlton. We have his uh, official governor's portrait hanging in this building, as well as oil portraits of all of Florida's governors from uh, Andrew Jackson as territorial governor all the way to our current governor, Governor DeSantis. This building is the Okahumpka Railroad Depot. I think most of us are more familiar with Okahumpka today as a stop on the turnpike. Uh, but at one time it was a bustling town. It started out as a steamship port, the southernmost steamship port in central Florida. And then of course when Henry Plant put the railroad through there, uh, they built this railroad depot in 1898 and the entire town picked up and moved over several blocks uh, to be closer to the railroad. <laughs> Kind of an actually common thing that happened in those, in those days. Um, and to complement our depot, we have a 1917 red caboose. It's one of the last wooden cabooses on the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad. Um, and that picture on the right there is the station master's office inside of the depot. And this little building was part of a logging camp in the Green Swamp. Uh, it was a place where the workers in the logging camp could live. Uh, we had originally thought this building might be um, from the 1930s or 40s, but a recent research we discovered that it's, it's much older than that. It was probably late uh, 1800s, probably 1895 to before 1920. And today we use it um, to house um, the interior of a post office, and that's what the inside looks like today. It's, um, uh, interior of a post office from the 1880s. And this building was the detached kitchen of the Murphy Farmstead. We use it today uh, to house our print shop. It's the oldest building on the property. It was built in 1870. You see the picture on the right there. Um, we have a youngster making a postcard on one of our tabletop printers. We also have uh, several much larger printers as well, and during the State Fair every year we print our own Cracker Country Chronicle newspaper uh, for guests to, to take home. This is the Smith House. It was built in Zephyr Hills, Florida, up in Pasco County in 1893. 
uh, by, or it was built for Daniel and Elizabeth Smith. This house was built for them by their neighbors while they were on their honeymoon. Isn't that sweet? I, I would venture to say my neighbors would not build a house for me while I was out of town. Um, they raised three boys in this house, raised them to adulthood, and it's always fun to tell the kids that when they come there on a field trip because they are just astounded that you could possibly fit a family of five um, in a house like that. When Cracker Country first opened, probably the first 10 years it was open, um, two of the Smith brothers who grew up in that house used to come during the fair and actually tell people what their memories were of growing up in that house. This little building uh, we use now to represent a church it was originally an African-American schoolhouse in Gretna, Florida, which is up in the Panhandle. And then in the 1940s, it became the Holy Ghost Church. Uh, on the right, you see, um, we have it set up as a church. You see um, the interior of it. It's a really beautiful little space. During the fair, we have people uh, who will come and perform. It's a kind of a community performance space. We have shape note singers uh, and people who come and and sing gospel that would have been popular in the time period that it represents. Um, we also use it sometimes to do our school programs. We set it up as a schoolhouse as well. It's a really good example of a typical uh, community building that would have been used for lots of different things. This is the Terry store. It came from Fort White in uh, North Florida, not too far from I-75, I think. Um, this store was built by the grandfather of another Florida governor. This was built by Lawton Child's grandfather. Um, that family sold it to the Terry family in the 1820s. And they operated the Terry store up until the mid-1980s. And this was the last building to come to Cracker Country. It, it, it came in in 1992 um, with a lot of the interior of the original store still intact. And that is what the interior of the Terry store looks like. Um, one thing we, uh, one of the things that we love to do in there is um, at Christmas time we have a Sears robot catalog from 1904 and uh, a, a big poster that people can look up what they would like for Christmas out of the Sears catalog and write it on there um, and every year we post that on our Facebook uh, page to see what, what what modern people would have picked out of the Sears catalog in 1904 for Christmas. That's always fun. And this building is a schoolhouse. It was a very typical one-room schoolhouse. This is our youngest building. It was built in 1912 in the community of Castalia, Florida, down in DeSoto County. Um, when the kids come, they actually sit in the schoolhouse and take a lesson, like you might have in a one-room schoolhouse. Um, extra credit, that flag in the corner has the correct number of stars for uh, 1898. And over on, yeah, I don't think you can read it, um, but we also have the Pledge of Allegiance as it was in, in 1898 on the board there, um, as it was written in 1892 by Francis Bellamy. It uh, was missing a few of the things that are in it today. That pledge says, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the kids, inevitably, somebody will raise their hand and say, your pledge is wrong. <laughs> and um, and it's, great, it's great when the kids discover that for themselves. And then we can talk about how um, it was originally just written to be sort of a generic pledge that any, co any country could use. Um, and then in the 1920s, we added, it changed from my flag to the flag of the United States of America. And then, of course, in the 50s, under God was added into our Pledge of Allegiance. But that is how um, the children would have said it in 1898. And that is the Rainy Building. We use that today as our general store at Cracker Country, which is what the building originally was. It was built in the 1880s in Ona, Florida, which is another one of those communities down in South Central Florida that kind of doesn't uh, really exist anymore. Um, it's in present-day Hardy County. It was a general store and post office, and the family lived upstairs. Um, and now, like I said, it, it houses a museum exhibit about the Woodbury and the Carlton families. And all of the proceeds from everything that's sold in our general store goes to fund our education uh, programs at Cracker Country.
whenever we have any kind of event or uh, during the state fair or school field trips, we try to add as much activity as we possibly can. We really want this to be a living museum. Um, so whenever you come there, especially the kids, you might be helping the blacksmith out, you might be helping our soap maker, you might be making a rope, you might be churning butter, you might be doing laundry on an old-fashioned um, scrubbing board, you might be cultivating the garden, playing old-fashioned games, um, you might even uh, learn how to lasso a cow, which is a lot harder than it looks, even if a cow is made of plastic. And um, we do, uh, you know, it is our, always our goal to send children home as exhausted and dirty as possible, because then we know they've had a good time. So our staff at Cracker Country, our uh, full-time staff is very small. There are only three of us. And this museum really runs on our docents. Uh, we couldn't possibly do it with, without them. I'm sure that's true of you guys, too. Um, we have about 125 docents. Uh, some of them are, are part-time paid employees that teach our school programs. Others are volunteer. Um, they, they donate so many volunteer hours to us. Um, we have an adult docent program. We also have a teenage docent program um, for ages 13 through 17. The, the, um, the young man on the right that's leading the program is one of our teen volunteers. Um, and these people are the reason I get up and go to work every day. It is just so nice um, to get to know all of them. They are very interesting. They all have big lives and they bring so much to Cracker Country. They've been in, you know, they're everybody from college students to college professors to um, people retired from every imaginable field. Um, and they really uh, keep Cracker Country going. Our youngest volunteer is 13. Our oldest one is, I think, 91 now and everything in between. And um, they're just a, a pleasure to be with every single day. So Cracker Country is uh, not open to the public every day. Um, like I said, we're open during the Florida State Fair, um, all the 12 days of the fair, which this upcoming fair will be February 10th through the 21st, so you can come, come visit us then, see Cracker Country. During the fair, we, have, uh, we invite um, um, artisans and um, craftspersons who come and show uh, historical skills and crafts and music. And they come from all over the southeastern United States, and they populate Cracker Country um, during the state fair. Uh, and then, like I said, from March, middle of March to the end of May, and uh, the end of September through the middle of December, we're doing school programs about four days a week. Um, and then we also open for special events, private tours, and uh, a few public events. And we have some of those coming up. On Saturday, September the 18th, we're going to participate in Smithsonian Magazine's Museum Day, where we will join museums all over the country and opening our doors for free to welcome guests in. And that event will be from 10 to 4. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll be opening on the evening of Saturday, October the 23rd for Tall Tales of Old Florida, which is sort of our uh, alternative Halloween event. Um, these are our kind of slightly scary, slightly funny, um, very questionably true, uh, but always family friendly <laughs> legends uh, of things that have happened in Florida. This will be our fourth year of doing that program and we have uh, discovered researching this that weird Florida stories are not a modern phenomenon at all. It's been going on forever. Um, for instance, did you know that there have been more Bigfoot sightings in Florida than in any other southern state? <laughs> of course, have. we have 26 different types of Bigfoot that have been documented in the state of Florida, as a matter of fact. Um, so, um, so those are our fun stories. That's a fun evening event. And then uh, coming up on Saturday, December 11th, is our annual Christmas in the Country event. We've been doing this one for about 20 years now. So the fairgrounds is in um, the eastern part of Hillsborough County. Um, if, you, if you take um, 275 um, and then you get on I-4 going east, just keep going east and um, you can either get off at the Martin Luther King Boulevard exit or at the next exit which is Orient Road and the fairgrounds is, is right there. We also have our largest public entrances on uh, Highway 301. 